Hey, Neil McDonald here. Um, I'm going to wait a couple seconds for people to get into a live meeting. Anytime you start um, 12 o'clock live, you have to wait for people to come in. So I thought I'd uh, give a couple of tips that um, I have related to SAM.gov. I was just watching Anna Ehrman. If you don't know her, she's at the State Department on the small business professional side. She used to um, be on the Virginia PTAC side for PTAX. And uh, she was doing a session on PTAX today, and it just reminded me of um, two big reasons that I use uh, SAM and I find it really helpful. And so as you join, I'm just going to keep talking about this tip for a second to give people time to get in. Um, but I use SAM.gov uh, as a way to be notified about um, industry days. So that's the first tip. If you haven't done this before, go in and set up a safe search for industry days. And industry days are awesome because they'll um, allow you to be able to find out about people and get your uh, get their contact information. So it's a great way to be able to break into an agency if you're looking to do that. Um, as you're joining, I'm just, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes here, um, get started like two minutes after 12 with the topic of the day that I'm tackling uh, on government contracting uh, matchmaking session. So I'm going to get to that in a minute, but I'm just letting people come in. I want to give you a couple of tips. Uh, if you join in, thank you for joining and go ahead and put your um, name, company name, and your core competency into the chat if you feel comfortable doing that. Other people like to see it. I like to see it. Um, it's also a way to engage on LinkedIn this way. They'll push this uh, these live sessions out to more people on LinkedIn, and we'll get more folks in. Um, and uh, just as we move forward, it's also one of the ways I'm going to start bringing federal buyer representative program office people, contracting office, small business professionals, even consultants in the industry to um, to the government contracting, I'm going to bring them in and interview them just live in this way. And um, I'll find the ones that are exciting. So um, I just, uh, I don't know if you can see this on your LinkedIn, but I just watch as people are uh, coming up and joining LinkedIn. I'm going to do one more minute and then I'll get started on today's topic. But the second reason I use um, SAM.gov, just giving a, a quick tip here, is I use SAM.gov to track RFIs. And I love RFIs as a way to do marketing, marketing into an agency that I'm trying to pursue. So say I'm trying to go after um, the Air Force. And, and if you pick a, uh, uh, you know, a major command that's in there, uh, let's just say AMC. If I'm trying to go after AMC, then I'll watch for every RFI that's even remotely related to what I sell. And in the past, I've sold IT professional services. And so I would watch for those and try to respond to RFIs in a way that I can highlight what we do. And, and you can watch other videos I've done where I talk about how RFIs have no rules for industry. You can do whatever you want. And, and the government on their side can do whatever they want. They're like, whatever, I'm not looking at this. You didn't answer what I wanted. But you have this chance to market your high, your specialties. And, and if you track on SAM when RFIs are dropping and you only write to RFIs and you only write what you're good at, well, you can respond within a single day. Um, with a response back that's a five-page good, good kind of um, capability. So consider going out and setting that up. Um, I'm going to get started here, but I wanted to uh, do a uh, little thank you to whoever's joining early on LinkedIn Live, right? I appreciate you coming and joining me 12 to 1230, or at least 12 to 1205, right? And so instead of having to wait for the entire uh, video webinar or whatever to get a little prize at the end, I want to give prizes to people who show up early and, and get... Um, really what you do is you help LinkedIn see that somebody's here and they put the word out to maybe a few more people on LinkedIn and say, Hey, Neil's live. Why don't you come over and watch? So um, I wanted to offer uh, you something. And so here's what I'm going to offer today. And and here's the thing. I don't want to keep remembering what I offer in this video. So if you do it today, um, this will be perfect. But uh, anybody, don't do it afterwards because I'll, I'll move on to the next thing I'm offering. But if you joined early on this call, and you have somewhere you're trying to get into and you're having a problem to get into, let me know. Like it's an agency, an office, even a company. Let me know. I'll help you get into that. Um, uh, I'll just help you for free, get in and um, knock on doors. I, I won't necessarily do a lot with the, the, any of the meeting that you want to have, but getting in the door shouldn't be uh, hard, right? It takes a little bit of effort, but the government wants to hear from buyers or sellers like you. And so if you're having a problem, let me know and I'll do that. And that's um, for the first uh, group of you who joined already. So let me get started with today's topic. Um, I wanted to talk with you about are government contracting matchmaking sessions worth it? 
and I won't make you wait till the end to get my answer. I don't think they're worth it at all. Uh, not at all. And I'm going to tell you uh, why I don't think they're worth it. Then I'm going to tell you how I, what, what I think you can do to make them a little bit more worthwhile. And then my recommendation that I always tell customers on what do you do instead of matchmaking sessions. And by the way, just to clarify what I mean by matchmaking, I don't mean an event um, where uh, government's trying to communicate to industry or you go to a conference, things like that. What I'm talking about is when you sit down at those tables and everybody gets 10 to 15 minutes and they move. And let's just start there, right? With uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, that's one of the reasons I say no. You get 10 to 15 minutes, it's so fast and you're talking to different uh, people. And the reason it's bad on the government side is they talk to like hundreds of small businesses and how can they possibly retain anything or, or take next step action item um, or action items for next steps uh, as they move forward? They really can't, right? It's just such a convoluted thing. And um, this goes into, and by the way, if you see me looking here or you see me looking there, there I'm looking at chats and here I'm looking at um, a couple of notes I just jotted down to talk to you about. Um, by the way, give me a little chat, thumbs up or something. Let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, so one of the biggest reasons I don't like uh, matchmaking sessions is they're almost always uh, in person, right? They're, they're, they're barriers to entry as far as I'm concerned. They're geographical barriers to entry compared to, um, uh, you know, if you think about the good old boy system, that's a good old boy system barrier to entry. There's um, barriers to entries that uh, women-owned businesses or business owners have felt. So there's those types, but this is geographical barriers to entry. Most matchmaking events happen in Washington, D.C., inside the Beltway. I live in Washington, D.C. Well, now I'm a little bit outside, but I actually lived on Capitol Hill. Um, at one point, I was living right next to HUD. I could walk to many federal agencies. I could get on a metro and be two stops later. I'm in the Pentagon. And so I have this ability to get anywhere easily, you know, say bye to the uh, kids and I head off to the um, to my meeting and then I come back and there's no big deal. The minute you start going out the belt out of the beltway, you start putting in uh, drive commutes, right? So anybody who lives outside the beltway, uh, and if you're not familiar with this area, that's an hour, two hour commute a lot of times when you're dealing with the traffic in DC or the parking and all that. And then the begin when you begin to move out of that, you're looking at travel time now. So I, I have multiple hours of travel on driving or flying even. How on earth are anybody in the middle of the country um, or the West Coast supposed to attend a, a HUD event here in, in D.C., right? And so my uh, problem with these events is that they're in person, not virtual. And that's one of the reasons I say they're just not worth it. It's, it's a hit or miss on whether you get success. But the, the cost to you, the investment with the unknown just isn't a smart investment. Um, and I'm completely candid here. <laughs> I'm going to talk, talk to you about how to make it work, but um, I'm not here to sugarcoat it. I wish the government would improve this. It's a very simple fix. No major cost on there. I, I would submit that it would actually be a cost reduction if they did what I said, which is go virtual. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the second reason I really think matchmaking sessions are bad for the government and for industry is if your industry, you show up most times, the 80-20 rule, most times you have no clue who's sitting on the other side of the table. Um, if you're a construction company, it could be an IT person on the other side, an IT buyer, or somebody more familiar with professional services. Or if you're a professional services person, it could be a facility manager or uh, a facility uh, contract specialist, somebody who's more focused on those type of purchases. So you never have this complete match, right? And, and let me kind of try to equate it to a, a dating. Right. There's two ways of uh, well, there's there's a lot of ways of dating, but there's these two particular ways I want to talk about. One is speed dating and the other is, um, you know, the Internet. And so speed dating, if you're not familiar with this, right, is is um, a bunch of people go into a room and some people sit on one side of the tables and the other sit on the others and they go in different directions for 10 minutes. They they sit in front. So say it's a bunch of men on one side, a bunch of women on the other and they just go and it's like. All of a sudden, somebody sits in front of me and they're like, oh, great, there's Neil or whatever, right? There's You're just stuck with whoever's there. That's speed dating, right? That's, to me, like the matchmaking sessions that happen often. Um, eHarmony is a great example of what's the right way to do speed dating. It's doing it virtual. It's doing it through the Internet. Somebody has this ability to look at profiles and go, oh, that person likes dancing. So do I. You know, it might be a good fit. You know, that person lives in my geography, um, that kind of thing, in the government side. That person buys what I sell 
or from the government's perspective, that person sells what we um, are looking for. And um, so that's a big deal. There's a thousand horror stories out there that all of us small businesses have where we sit at a table and we just find somebody who was stuck with this job. You know, hey, Jane, hey, Joe, I need you to go down and be our rep our agency representative for the um, matchmaking session. Small businesses are going to come in, collect their capability statement, talk to them for a few minutes and then move on. Well, that's not helpful to the government. That's not helpful to industry. That's what we call lose lose. And so that kind of thing is no good. Um, and then the last thing I said this a little bit already, but I want to uh, reinforce it is that there's limited potential for any real impression. Um, you get 10 minutes with a person, maybe 15. There's all this noise all around you with other people talking. Often um, uh, the, the government is looking to kind of check off boxes. There's a lot of, uh, by necessity, almost a lot of rapid um, decisions on, oh, you guys must do this. Or, you know, the government feeling like they need to say these five things every single time a vendor sits in front of them. And, and they don't have the time to realize that, look, we do $40 million with your, with your own agency. We're just here to meet you and talk to you. And so um, that, that crowded approach makes it very hard. And this is um, why I want to move into uh, what you can do to make this better. And so um, I don't believe matchmaking sessions are worthwhile. When I, if I don't currently have a government contracting company, and I probably never will again. I sold my last one. I'm pretty solidly in the CupCon Chamber of Commerce. I do a couple of uh, high, high ticket uh, training courses on the side for customers. But my play is in the GovCon Chamber of Commerce for free. We want to teach as many people how to get going in government contracting. And so I would never send them to an event. What I would do is say, um, pick up the phone and call the people you want to call. But if you are going to the event, here's some things you can do to make them successful. Um, the first thing is prepare and know the offices. So one of the problems government has is us industry folks come in and we really don't even know the organization. Let's say we're going into HHS or we go into FDA and they have subordinate offices, but we haven't taken the time to really understand what is what are their offices, what are their primary focuses. Um, if you look at the Navy, NAV War basically is Naval Information Warfare, so the IT side. NAV C is basically uh, boats under the water or over the water, but boats and NAV Air is you know planes. Uh, I'm I'm definitely um, pigeonholing them, but you can see that with a basic understanding, you begin to understand which ones of these major commands might fit more for you. And so um, one thing you can do is just look at the org chart. If you're going into a HUD event, make sure you know the offices and the agencies they have. And this leads to my second uh, tip is have questions written out. I talk about call plans and other stuff. Um, if you have five questions that you can come in and ask every table that you sit down with, it'll help you move forward. What do you really, why are you there at that event? Like, what are you trying to learn? Don't just go and sit in front of somebody and say, hey, I'm a small business. I want to work with you. You know, have a next step or a little bit of information that moves your sale forward or your understanding of the agency forward. And that'll be a worthwhile thing. Uh, an example of a question might be, um, you know, we do Microsoft SharePoint, let's say. That tends to be my go-to uh, thing if you haven't been here before. But we do Microsoft SharePoint. Who within your organization manages the SharePoint environment, both the application development side and the server side. You know, could you introduce me to them? Something related to that is, as it sticks with SharePoint is I might say, well, who does your cloud management? Because SharePoint is basically cloud now. Um, who does your cloud management? If I can find those people and talk to them, I can have my own conversations to move forward on uh, SharePoint. So your own set of questions, whether it's in construction, manufacturing or services, will help you have a much better uh, meeting. So prepare like three to five of those. Um, be very focused on your capability statement. When I had a company, I could sell everything, right? We did all sorts of IT related services, but our specialty was SharePoint. We always said SharePoint. We wanted people to have one word that described our company. Oh, you're the SharePoint company. Sure are. Even though we could do a hundred things. Many of us sit there and go, no, 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 I, I could do software development. I can do cybersecurity. I can do janitorial services. I can do security guard work. It doesn't matter. Pick one, get in the door, then start having more conversations. And so when you go to these events, the reason I say pick one is because if you give your buyer two or three, they might end up going to the, the one you least want. And more importantly, they 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 will, um, uh, it's funny, confuse themselves, which I just did there, um, on, well, where do I go? What's going on? But if you give them one thing, they have to think, who does facility management in our organization? 
I think you really need to talk to these people. If they cannot answer that, that becomes the, the next tip I have, which is get a commitment for a follow-up, right? An action item. Uh, hey, you're not able to tell me, can I follow back up with you? And maybe you can research it, or maybe you can put me in touch with somebody. Um, just so we're clear, sometimes those people will just be not helpful to you at all. Sorry to spoil it, government, but sometimes some of the buyer representatives are not helpful and not even willing to be helpful to industry. You just have to accept it as industry. But if you find somebody who's helpful, you need to help them be helpful by providing that next step or um, the suggestion of following up. You know, do I might do you mind if I come back? So um, the uh, uh, the next thing, next tip I want to give you is um, so those are things you can do to make it help happen if you're in there and you're going to do the event. Um, but the the next thing you can do, and this is what I recommend to anybody I support is have your own matchmaking events. Why wait for the government to set up some random uh, event that has matchmaking in there for you to go in? Instead, think to yourself, uh, if you've got a couple of people in your company and you're all responsible for um, sales, two, three people, 10 people even, coordinate a matchmaking day where it's virtual, you can be in your conference room, two or three of you can sit around, and what you do is you just schedule out two or three weeks and you reach out to all the people you're trying to reach out to. Uh, an example, let's just say you're trying to reach out to small business specialists. You just tell them, look, I got a couple of my colleagues all together on the 15th of April. Can, I don't know how I picked that date, but can I uh, can can I find time on that date that fits in your calendar? And this is what we got available. But basically what you're doing is you're filling in your own matchmaking slots. Instead of you getting on their schedule, you're getting them on yours. And um by doing this, it allows you to put together a bunch of people for matchmaking. And what I recommend is uh, do a 30 minute meeting. 15 minutes beforehand is when you and your team are reminding yourself who this person is you're gonna to talk to and what you're gonna ask and where you're gonna go. And 15 minutes after is a bathroom break, but also action items and meeting minutes. Send a quick thank you to these people. And now you've done it. And you can do eight of these in a day on a normal given day, right? You can just knock out eight of them and now you've just had eight matchmaking sessions that are specific to not only your company and your services, but it's also very specific to the agencies you're targeting. Um, and that's doable at the program office level as well. And we can you know, take that to another, another one. Um, and this, the last tip I have here on this, and, and by the way, as I'm talking here, if you've got a question you wanna challenge me on this and go, well, what about this, Neil, or how can I do this? Um, put it in the chat, because I'm almost done here on my topic for today. Uh, and so I'd love to be able to just take the last 10 minutes and answer any questions you have. But the last tip I have is um, direct approach, picking up the phone and calling people. I get folks all the time talking to me about uh, going to this event, going to the uh, uh, the Navy Gold Coast or whatever their event in San Diego is called. You know, I really want to go down to D.C. because I have a huge conference. It's like, well, what does it matter? I went to a conference recently with somebody and I, and I shadowed them and I was uh, helping them in whatever way. And one of the things that I noticed that came out of that conference is uh, this person knew many of the folks that were at the conference because they've been doing business development for 20 years. And what I was saying was, you didn't even need to go to this event. You could have picked up the phone and called it because many of the people he ran into that have follow-up action items were looking to talk with somebody like him again and to refresh the conversation, whatever it was. And I believe it's the same way for many of you. You already know folks. And if you don't, it's not that hard to pick up the phone, um, call a small business specialist, which leads to this person, which leads to that person. But then you're talking to the people you want to talk to and not waiting to see who's going to be at an event um, to talk to there. So um, that wraps up my topic. I'm trying to look here at the chat on, I got LinkedIn down there on my phone, but um, if you have any questions, type it in the chat. I'll wait a couple of seconds here. And then, uh, by the way, if you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you disagree, tell me why. Put it in the comments, either here or on YouTube, if you see it there. Um, I believe firmly that uh, uh, matchmaking one-on-one -on -one is good when it's the right buyer to seller conversation. Um, that's the important thing for us. And so there are some organizations like the Virginia PTAC. If you haven't been tracking them, you should. They have multiple events. They have an event coming up on May 23rd, I think. And um, in their events, they really work hard to grab the industry partners capability statements and, and match that 
against the buyer needs and they get the buyers to be specific about what are you looking for? I don't just want you to sit at a table and let me run small businesses through and hope you find one that fits. What they try to do is actually pull people together. So that's why I said the 80 20 rule. There's some organizations who work really hard to make matchmaking fit for um, them and uh, for industry and, and government. So, okay, I'm not seeing anything else. I don't need to keep us the whole way. I don't see any comments. So I'm going to wrap up. It's Friday. I should be able to get out of here early. It's sunny outside. Um, if you like these live events, give it a thumbs up. Next week, I'm, uh, my plan is to tackle uh, topics around capture, if that's helpful to you. And remember, if you've got any um, particular challenge questions or, you know, what are you running into in the next week? You're like, hey, I wonder what Neil has to say about this. I do uh, business development, sales, capture continuously right now. Even though I sold my company, I stay in the mix so I can keep making sure the advice I give industry, in particular small businesses, is always relevant and always proven. So I'd love to be able to tackle your biggest challenges. Um, and reminder of those people who showed up uh, early, if I can introduce you or help you get introduced to one person or one office somewhere, reach out to me in a direct message and I'll be happy to try to help you do that. Uh, and I think that's it. I'm going to wrap up. Uh, remember, government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. Have a great weekend.